Welcome to Friday night Q&A. We're going to continue with questions about the seven seals. Brian, welcome to the program. Thanks, Anir. It's a blessing to be on the program and welcome to our viewers. Please pray for us as we start um, our Q&A this evening. Sure, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have promised to give us the Holy Spirit who will seal us with all the earnest expectations in our hearts of your love, your grace, and your glory. We do want to be in your kingdom. We thank you for the book of Revelation. That is the revealing or unveiling of your love, of the plan of salvation. Please bless us as we study your word on the fourth seal. Help us that we will not be caught up with the deceptions of spiritual Babylon, but we will be enlightened every day by your spirit to stand for the truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So we have studied the first, second, and third seal. We've looked at what the seals represent, especially the first four, the four horsemen. And we've got into those questions, and you can watch the previous episodes to find out more as to what we said. And today we're going to look at the fourth seal. So we are going to go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. And the Bible says, When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, of hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Now, Brian, firstly, tell us more a little bit about this pale horse. Uh, what does this represent? We followed the church's era too, that the first horse, horse is in line with Ephesus, the second horse was Smyrna, then Pergamum. So this is Thyatira, the longest of the churches. Correct. The message. So, mm. what, what time period is this, and what can we learn from this four horse? You know, this death, these four judgments that we read of also here, of of the sword, the hunger, the death, and the beasts of the earth. Tell us more about this horse. So, Renier, I, I believe this time period is from the year AD five thirty eight to fifteen sixty three. Mm. Uh, this is a time period where. Um, the beast of Revelation, the little horn of Daniel, has so controlled the powers of earth, the kings of the earth, um, particularly of Western uh, Europe. And we find that um, there is a co co coalition, um, a, a union of church and state that uh, totally erodes God's word and God's truths. And... Um, we find during this time year, of course, if the black horse is the beginning, um, the pale horse is actually the very heart and soul of this power that causes the earth to be so decrepit of God's word. The sword is used to destroy people's lives who oppose the church. Uh, we find that um, the faith of the church is a dead faith. And so it's mm. pale. You know, Renier, I've, I've looked on um, a few dead people in my life. Uh, and one thing that I always notice is they become cold and pale. Mm. And uh, this power has so destroyed the word of God that uh, there's, there's no life left in its um, in, in, in its dogmas, in its religion, because this is a religion of the church with the state. And whenever, no matter which religion, whether it be Islam, whether it be Buddhism, or whether it be Christianity, uh, Catholicism, uh, if, if a church becomes united with the state, it uses the state to enforce force its dogmas and teachings. And of course the state now and the church become so corrupt because anybody that does not agree with them 
the might and power of the state is brought to bear upon the people. And this is what we find in the Middle Ages, which mm-hmm. is better known as the Dark Ages. Dark because the Bible says, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But this power says, no, what I say is more important. The tradition of the church are more important. And so this is when many, many, many terrible things come into the church. I mean, we have things like... Um, prayers for the dead, making the sign of the cross. We have veneration of angels and dead saints. We have the use of images here. We have uh, the doctrine of purgatory. We have the time when uh, this uh, holy water, we have all these uh, things like the rosaries coming in and things like the, the, the Council of Trent where they decide they're going to completely obliterate the people who have started the Reformation. So this is all these terrible things, indulgences have now become the main source of income for the church. Mary worship is now the focus and not Jesus Christ. Uh, people are led to the priest for forgiveness of sins. Uh, Renier, I mean, this, this is so far removed from the word of God that the, the, the time comes where people who are part of the system, they are so completely devoid of any love, of any truth, that it can be looked upon as pale and dead. Mm. So all of these doctrines and false theories, etc., that has come into the church has literally almost destroyed the faith. Right. It's like what God allowed here, because one of the, again, these four horsemen represents judgments, upon um, that has come what god has allowed he has literally just nearly destroyed the faith and the reason also is is explained in this seven churches the first four churches in line with these four horsemen is god says but i see you doing this it's almost like you allowed this to happen if, Mm -hmm. if you obeyed my commandments if you did what i say you wouldn't have gotten to this place like in the church of pergamum where satan's where satan's throne is You've allowed this to happen. You allowed Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, to come into the church. You've allowed fornication, sexual immorality by accepting paganism, by mm. worshiping pag- pagan, like in paganism, by accepting Sunday. All of this have led to where you are today. God then has to step back. And the devil takes full sway and lets the Antichrist do what they do best. And that was to bring all these false doctrines in, to persecute the saints and do evil. And only those that were loyal, they were persecuted right up into the mountains because they stood for what was right. So this pale horse brings in death and the sword, etc., destroying the faith of God. And it's interesting that John here actually quotes the Old Testament. These four judgments can be found also in Leviticus 26, 21 to 26, and Deuteronomy 32, 30, 22, 23 to 25. And also, if you read Ezekiel 14, 21, it says, My four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword and famine and wild beasts and pestilence. It's almost the same things we read here in, in the fourth seal. Is these the sword, the death, the wild beasts, etc., And this is what God brought in the Old Testament. And now we see it is allowed in the New Testament to happen too, because people walked away from God, following their own way and taking on paganism. So the summary of the first four horses, the white horse is the preaching of the gospel. And the red horse is opposition to the gospel because of the preaching of the gospel. The black horse is spiritual famine of God's word because people are rejecting the gospel. And the pale Mm -hmm. horse is these final judgments that's coming because of the evil that has now totally taken over the faith. And that was, if you were to ask people what was Christianity during this time period that Brian has mentioned these years, they would have said evil. That's what it is. It is absolute chaos. That's what it was during that time. I'd like us to look at a text there. Um, It's found there in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, and we just read from verses 7 through to 10, because um, we find here, in fact, if we look at verses 4 first, um, it speaks of this power here. Um, and, and verses 3 says, let no one deceive you by Second Thessalonians 2 verses 3, let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless 
the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now, uh, the son of perdition, um, there's only two times this is mentioned. Here is the second time and the first time it's used against Judas. And, and, and Judas was a son of perdition because um, he worked within to betray Christ. Uh, um, and, and, and finally, he, he, he was destroyed. That's why he's called the son of perdition. But Judas betrayed Christ. And here is a power working in the last days that just like Judas works within um, and, and seeks to destroy those. It says, who opposes and exalts himself, verses 2, above him that is called God or who is worshipped, uh, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing that he is God. So, so here's a power that says that I am the vicar of Christ. I am taking the place of God. A pious, Pope Pius said, he says, I am God on mm -hmm. earth. Um, and, and, and here is the prerogatives of the popes that said, no, as the vicar of Christ, what I say, what, what the Pope said, the world has to accept and even God himself has to subscribe to it. He, he takes the place of God himself. But it says here, and now you know that what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. Right? So, so what is doing the, the restraining here? The restraining here is the fact that papal Rome, the Roman Empire is still ruling. And, and as soon as they let go, in other words, they were restraining this power because Paul says the mystery of iniquity does already exist. The, the mystery of lawlessness already exists in the time. So, so, so here is this power now. And when did that happen? That's why we say this, this period here is from 530 AD, AD because Justinian, he gives now, and now he's in Eastern Rome from um, Istanbul, today modern Turkey. Right, so so he gives his power, his seat, and authority to the bishop of Rome, and so um, what happens now is the bishop of Rome is now a head of secular matters. He is both a beast, which is a ruling power, a secular power, and he is styled as a church, the woman. That's why it's called in Revelation the woman riding the beast. And so from A.D. 538, when Phagellus takes over and becomes the ruler of Western Rome, now empowered uh, by Justinian, the papacy now begins to spread its tentacles all over in the affairs of kings, the whole of Europe. I mean, I mean you, you think about it, um, the kings would have to come and bow down and kissed the ring of the Pope because he was ruler of heaven and of earth. Mm. And so they had to subscribe to what he said. And so as we look at all the corruption that came in the church through this union of church and state, it, it came to a boiling point where France, who first recognized the power through Clovis in 508, is the same power through this time, of course, through Berthia that Napoleon has sent to take the Pope captive. And, dis, and, and disbanded the papal states or dis, uh, um, uh, took them away from him and he received a deadly wound. So, so the world had, you know, the, the noontide of the papacy was the darkest moment for the earth yeah. because everything that they did was to gratify themselves and the teachings of men were more important than the word of God and that's why it was a time of scarcity that leads to spiritual death of this it is a faith and that's why God had to raise up the reformers and even though during this time of darkness those reformers had been hiding like you said the Waldensians, the Huguenots and the, the Hugen, uh, I mean the, the, the Albigenses, these were people that would rather die than to worship the system of Catholicism and again, Rainier, you know, we've said this before, and, and I need to say this again because maybe someone's watching for the first time. You know, God is not against Catholic people. God loves Catholic people. I believe there'll be many wonderful Catholic people in heaven. But God is against the system of deception, the teachings of the Catholic Church that have superseded God's word, suppressed the faith of Bible-believing Christians, and have 
led people to worship God, not in spirit and truth, but through the traditions of men. And Jesus said, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this, this system is full of the commandments of men, the teachings of men. It has images and image worship that God forbade in the Ten Commandments. It has removed and replaced the Sabbath, seventh day, to Sunday, the first day. It has done so much to destroy God's truth. And yet, God has got his people in there. And he says, come out of her, my people. So God has got his people. God loves the priests. God loves the Catholic people. But God does not love Aaron. Mm. So basically, <clears throat> the white horse is the gospel is going out. The result is persecution right. follows the red horse. Right. Then the devil sees that he cannot get this to stop the spreading of the gospel and he brings in mm. compromise and unfortunately right. God's church many accepts this compromise through the black horse and then because mm. of this compromise and the word of God being suppressed it leads to the spiritual death as Brian has so rightly explained the historical setting as the papacy has brought in these false doctrines and persecuting God's people because of these false doctrines, it literally leads to spiritual death. Therefore, the word of God is key in everything. It was the word of God that was suppressed, and that lead led to spiritual death. That is the right. fourth horse explained so well by Brian now in the historical setting. And I think that's all we're going to have time for in this one because if we're going to jump into the fifth seal, um, I, I think we're going to go over time because there's a lot to say about the fifth yeah. seal too. So we'll cover that in our next Q&A. Thank you, Brian, for explaining yeah. us this fourth seal, this fourth horse, the pale horse. And to our viewers, may God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. And may God bless you on this Holy Sabbath as you spend yeah. quality time with him as we close on in to the end of the year. Let's pray right. together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for uh, your word that you have mm. prophesied that things would happen. Now we look back into history and we saw we did, it did happen the way John wrote it in the first century. I pray, Father, mm. that we would not be spiritually dead, but we would live by the word of you, your word. Yes. And that it would be alive in our hearts as we live it out daily. Bless us yes. now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.